Hello, I'm Greg Pollock, and welcome to episode four of the Scaling Rails screencast series. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at New Relic's RPM service, um, give you a little tour of it, show you how easy it is to get up and running, and look at some of the advanced paid features that they have available. First up, we're going to be taking a look at a web app that uses New Relic's RPM service for performance monitoring. And that web application is going to be Shopify. The guys over at Shopify have been nice enough to let us into their New Relic account so we can see what their data looks like and how their server performs. Should be interesting. So let's go ahead and log in to Shopify's New Relic RPM account and see what it looks like. The first thing that we see is this dashboard you see here, which gives us a snapshot of how each of our servers and our applications are doing. If we zoom in here, the first thing we see are how our applications are doing as a whole. That first application has got four hosts associated with it and 36 Rails instances, which are broken out under the host category. So you can see the four servers that are working under that Shopify application. Over here on the left-hand side, we can see how our CPU is doing on each of our boxes and averaged out at the top for our applications, followed by the amount of memory all of our Rails instances are taking up on each of the hosts. And uh-oh, looks like we've got a red light. We might want to dive down in there deeper and figure out, is that host using too much memory? Maybe not. And you know, if it's OK, maybe then we can change the threshold so it doesn't show up as a red light. Further over on the page, we can see how many errors were thrown recently for each host. We can see the average response time, as well as the average throughput, which in this case is a request per minute. And lastly, the database load. So as you can see, the RPM dashboard gives you a quick snapshot at how your Rails servers and your applications are performing. But now let's, let's dive into one of these applications. We're going to go ahead and click on this Shopify application link right up there and see what happens. We're then brought to the Shopify overview page, which has a couple interesting graphs. The first graph is showing us the response time and load with the average call time measurements on the left hand side and the throughput measurements on the right hand side. So that's just showing us calls per minute. Next up, we'll take a look at CPU utilization. How is the CPU doing on average between all of our hosts? Then we've got physical memory utilization. On average, what does it look like between all of our servers? And lastly, what does the active record database activity look like between the finds and the saves? The finds here are in blue, and the saves here are in yellow. It's also worth noting that each of these graphs is only showing you right now a 30 minute time frame. You can change this at any point and going up to the right hand side of the screen and click that drop down and you can choose between 3 hours, 6 hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, etc, etc to view how your server has been performing over say the last week or the last month. Now we're going to go ahead and dive down a little bit deeper. If we click this graph over here on the left we're going to be brought to the controllers page. So let's take a closer look. The first thing that we're going to see is application throughput. This is telling us in the last six hours how many requests per minute our application has received. And it looks like on average it's about 1,200 requests per minute. Next up, we've got application response time broken out into its own graph, showing us over the last six hours um, how quickly we've been able to respond to the requests that have come into our application server. Over here on the bottom left of the screen is probably the most interesting bit, and that's showing us the slowest controller actions for our entire application. So as I can see here, I've got some controller actions that took 7 seconds, 6 seconds, 5 seconds, that's pretty slow. But if I take a closer look at the URLs over here on the left hand side, it looks like some of these are admin actions, so maybe that doesn't matter if they're slow or not. And if I hover over those graphs there, over those line bars, um, I actually get back a little bit more information. I can see here that the throughput for this particular action is only 0 0.02 requests per minute. So it doesn't get called much, probably not worth refactoring. But further down, I see an action get, gets called 3.38 requests per minute, and that takes 2.6 seconds to load. So that might be a good candidate for refactoring. If I click on that graph, what it's going to do over here on the right hand side, it's going to call up a performance breakdown so I can see exactly where that action is spending its time. Really useful information. 
I can see here that the commit action in the orders controller is taking 357 milliseconds, which might be a good candidate for refactoring. But the big time consumer is this request up here, which is taking 1.6 milliseconds. And my guess is this is where we call out to authorize.net to authorize credit cards. So I'm not too sure there's too much we can do about it. But as you can see, this is a really beneficial view for looking at your slowest controller actions, seeing where they spend their time, and figuring out how to best refactor them. Believe it or not, everything I've shown you thus far is completely free. It's very easy to set up, and I figured why not show you how. So here we are on the new Relic website. I'm going to go ahead and click on Get RPM, and this is going to bring me to a page where I'm going to be able to see all the different plans that RPM has. We've got a light plan, a bronze plan, silver and gold, each with additional features. And I'm going to go ahead and click that subscribe link next to the free because we want to sign up for a free account. Then I'm going to go ahead and you know fill out the typical login form stuff, yada yada. And it's going to send me an activation email. So I'm going to go back to my email account, click on that, find the link, click on the activation link. And that's going to actually generate another email to me. Except this email actually comes with a configuration file specifically for my Rails app and instructions on how to install it. It basically comes down to four easy steps. First step, install the new Relic plugin, just like so. Second step, take that config file they sent to you in that email, throw that into your config directory. Third step, deploy your application. Fourth step, go to their website, log in, and you've got access to data, which will help you scale your Rails application. Next up, I thought I'd give you a glimpse into their first tier subscription plan called Bronze. One thing you may have noticed is on these new Relic pages, there's a navigation menu up at the top left of the screen. So if I clicked on that drop down box, it would show me all the performance reports I have access to. The first bronze performance report that I have access to is the page volume report. And all this does is show me what are the most popular Rails controller actions that are getting hit. So as I can see here, I've got one action that over the past six hours has been hit 103,000 times. Right. So over here, that was the uh, collections action in the shop controller. And then as you can see, the next popular action after that, I can actually hover over these bar graphs for a little bit more information. And I can see that the average response time is 131 milliseconds. Might be a good candidate for a factoring, especially because I'm getting 286 requests per minute under throughput. Um, I can hover over the rest of them. This is the uh, products action in the shop controller, and then the index action. And it looks like the index action already has a response time of 34 milliseconds, so probably don't need to fix that. That's probably pretty fast. The next report I have is dedicated to active record. So let's zoom in here and take a closer look. I've got total database time split out between finds, saves, and destroys. The find is uh, the blue line, of course, that's the most popular. Saves down here, destroys even further down. The next graph I have access to is the database response time. So when I called the find method or save method or destroy method, um, how long did it take to return back to whichever action called it? Lastly, down over here, we've got our top database consumers. So these are sort of the, uh, the slowest active record commands. And I can see here, you know, order find is the slowest. Next up is product image find. I can hover over these just like before so that I can see that the average time is 57 milliseconds. Throughput is 122 calls per minute. Um, if I click on one of those, I, will, I can actually see where that is getting called from. So I can see here that the show action on the admin orders controller is responsible for 30.06 calls per minute to order find. So it might be beneficial if I take a look into that action and try to optimize it. Next up is the index hunter, which as you probably figured out by now is where we go to figure out where we might need indexes on our database tables. So if we zoom in here, we can see that it's showing us the slowest active record queries. So in this case, we've got a query that's taking two seconds to run. The next one is taking 1.95 seconds to run. Um, let's take a look at that. So this is saying that the update function inside the tracker controller you know, is taking a long time. If I hover over that, I can see that 
When this gets called, it takes two seconds to run. Throughput's only two calls per minute, so maybe that's important, maybe it's not, but maybe we have some indexes we can add to speed things up. So we've got reports that show us the slowest controller actions and reports that show us the slowest uh, active record methods, but um, nothing has put those two together until we've got the time consumption report. So this takes all of those and shows us our biggest time consumers. So as we can see here, the uh, collections action in the shop controller is, uh, takes a lot of time and has a lot of throughput. So there's a lot of people clicking on it, um, and the average response time is 130 milliseconds. So we'd probably get a lot of bang for our buck if we optimize that. We can also see that we've got some active record methods in here. The order find method has a response time of 57 milliseconds, throughput of 122 calls per minute. So maybe it might be worth refactoring. Next up, we've got the cluster breakout report. So as you saw at the very beginning, we've got four different hosts which make up the Shopify application. And what this is going to show us is it's going to show us the application throughput for each one of those different hosts on average. So if one of them is misbehaving, one of them needs more memory, one of them gets bogged down by another application we might be running on it, um, we're going to know because we're going to be able to see it on this report. And we also are shown application response time. And down below, we've got mongrel queue length, which might show us you know, if one of our mongrels is getting bogged down for some reason, or is frozen up, or maybe we need to add more mongrels so we can handle all of our requests. This might show us. Um, also, we've got CPU, so we can see how hot each of our CPUs is running on each of our hosts. The last report in the bronze tier is the compare with yesterday performance report. So as you might imagine, it simply looks at the performance for the you know, today's time frame in yesterday to see how things compare. So as you can see here, yesterday's in blue, today's in yellow. So it looks about the same. You've got throughput, you've got database comparisons, and lastly, you've got CPU. So where this might be really useful is if you do a new deployment to see if that has any effect on any of these factors because you're going to be able to compare it to the old data, yesterday's data, to today's data to see if you did make some performance improvements. Or, you know, maybe you had a programmer that added some bad code which had some effect on some of these factors. You're going to be able to immediately see that there was some impact on your servers. That's about all I have for this episode. We've gone over all the bronze features of New Relic RPM. In a future episode, I'm going to be covering all the silver and gold features, and they're pretty darn cool if you're interested in having a closer look. Um, the next episode in this series is going to be advanced page caching, so stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.